Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome to our Counterpoise podcast. Um, I am one of your co-hosts, Samantha Adams, and I'm joined with my other two co-hosts. You guys want to go ahead and introduce yourselves? Yeah, I'm Malik Foster, another co-host for the Counterpoise podcast. And I am Everett Stevenson, um, one of your other hosts for the Counterpoise podcast. And so today, um, I do want to let you guys know I'm out of town right now. Unfortunately, I have a family emergency that I have to deal with. And so um, it does not allow me to be in my normal situations. But um, I do want to continue to bring you guys a good show this week. And if they want to dedicate this show to my cousin, Michelle Hunt, um, who unfortunately passed, passed away. Um, and an untimely death. And so I want to dedicate this show to her. I love you, cuz. You know, big ups. And um, we here for you. We're we going we gonna to ride for you. We're going to celebrate for you. I want you to know it's all love. And, um, and, and welcome, everybody. Um, today we have a good show. Excuse me. Today we have a pretty good show on board. Um, we're talking about personal development and growth. Um, two of the things that we're looking to discuss is how individuals are able to um, grow as they become older, some of the things that lessons that they may have learned and that those, how those lessons have impacted their, their visions as they move forward in life. Maybe the way that they carry themselves, the way they conduct themselves or the way they may treat others. How has an experience within our own lives kind of shaped the way that we um, carry ourselves today? And so we're gonna give some examples within our own lives and how that happened. Um, but first I'll let some of my co-hosts go and then I'll, and I'll come back around. But yeah, before we, get, before we uh, get started, before we get into the dive all the way into the topic, um, we need to hi- we're gonna highlight our black business for um the week. Um Malik has that business for us ready. All right, guys, let me share my screen so y'all guys can see the black business of the week. Um there we go. So this is uh Crown Her Gorgeous. There's a friend of mine. Um she makes uh wigs, has hair. Um and other accessories as well. She also has books and courses to help teach other people who are interested in making wigs and dealing in the hair business. Um, As well, you can uh, go to her website, crownheartgorgeous.com, and there's a a contact at the bottom if if you guys want to contact her, email if you have any questions or whatever. So that's the best way to reach her. And also you can email her at crownheartgorgeous at gmail.com. That's what's up. That's what's up. Shout out to Crownheart Gorgeous. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so again, like uh, you were saying, we're going to talk about some growth, personal growth and development um, today. But, you know, we're going to start off by talking about, you know, the norms, right? The public and the private norms versus the private norms, rather, right? Because they're not always, they don't always align. Um, a lot of times whenever you're going after something, I don't care what the goal is, um, people have an idea as to how you should go about doing it. And that doesn't always match up with what works for you. And because what works for you, some people, you know, they, they tell you what they think you should do based on their own limited knowledge without actually being in the same lane as you, um, based on what they see. Part of my dog, if he starts barking, um, and they, they just don't get it. So you know, some, some, sometimes when, you know, you're going through any type of growth and development, you know, um, society will have its way of doing things. And you really have to just follow your heart, follow, you know, the blueprint that's already been set out before you. Because, you know, certain, certain professions and stuff, they're going to have a blueprint. There's like the 
fundamentals, right? Like it's like basketball. When you first learn how to play basketball, there's certain fundamentals that everybody has to have, right? You got to know how to dribble. You got to know how to play defense. There's certain things you have to be able to do when you shoot. You know, there's certain ways you have to know how to shoot. But as you develop in into that space, you know, you get better. You find your own techniques. You find the things that work best for you. You know, I remember um, Sean Marion, he used to play for the Suns. He played for a couple other teams. He had this really awkward way of shooting the free throw. Like he would pull the ball around and twist his body and do something and then shoot the ball. Always real weird, like the way he did it, but he was hitting his shots. So it's almost like, I mean, just because- It works for you, it works for you. Exactly, just because somebody else wouldn't necessarily do it that way doesn't mean that, you know, it shouldn't be done. There's more than one way to skin a cat. You know what Absolutely, I mean? Absolutely, Sam. And I wanted to I wanted to add on to that as well because I think another thing that we might learn when we're going through our development and growth is that sometimes you have to realize that like not and not necessarily just um going against maybe what society may look for you to do or what they're asking you or telling you because people might have an idea of what they think you know your life or what you know you should be doing is um what they might have an idea of what they think that you should be doing with your life or how you should be doing something within your career uh, for your life. However, when you're finding your own way and you're developing your own self, you know, sometimes you might have to have the courage and the, and the strength to be willing to just go the opposite way, to do what you feel like, you know, is is, is what, what feels right. And, and I say that to say like, it won't always necessarily be um, just society that's telling you that sometimes it might be family. Sometimes it might be friend, uh, you know, like family or, or family members, a parent or something like that that might not agree with your decision. But I think when you really learn to like trust yourself, you'll realize that you know when you're going through life that um, as you start to develop and and and, and get a stronger uh, a stronger development for who you are and trusting of your voice, then you will be able to realize that um, you'll be able to realize that you know you are happy with the decisions that you make because it's your decisions. You know what I mean? And that there were there were your decisions and you can say that, you know, what, win, lose or draw, you did it on your own, as opposed to feeling like you might want to feel like someone else might be uh, someone else might be um, um, having control over your life. And that's not decisions that you made. So I think that for, for personal reasons of not wanting to have regret, I think it's very wise that someone kind of make their own decisions and be comfortable with that. And I know and that takes time in life sometimes to, to get that confidence. Yeah, I was going to say, like, when it comes to the public versus the private, um, you know, with your personal development, I think you really need to separate the two, because when you're in public, you definitely want to be aware of the situation. Like, for let's take uh, the baby situation, for example, like, you got to be aware of what the situation is publicly, so you can't really say and do everything that you normally would do in private. So it's two different uh, spectrums there, it's two different situations. So when you're in your public situation, you got to behave one way. Of course, you want to be able to express yourself, but you got to be mindful that there's consequences as and just suppose that to in the private situation. When you're private and around friends, um, you can behave in a different manner. Or even when you're private amongst people who aren't necessarily your friends, your colleagues or whatever, you still want to behave in a certain manner. So you definitely want to always be mindful of your audience and who you're speaking to um and that goes a long way to your personal development once you can kind of get a better handle of that uh i think you'll see yourself grow uh, more and grow faster um and it'll be a beneficial to benefit to your life i think that's an important point malik um because you know it goes it goes there's two different aspects to that right um right. if you look at the baby situation and cancel culture right here he is growing in a, a particular type of way in a particular lane i guess is how i guess i could put it but then he made some comments that had him fall within cancel culture so then that develops him in a different way right yeah so he can learn from that mistake because exactly you know exactly. that was a public mistake if privately it would have been fine but in a public way he, he can learn to handle himself right. in a better way exactly. and also handle when you're getting that pushback and heat uh, from a different culture, how to handle that pushback. So hopefully his right. advisors and people around him can help coach him up. Well, oh guys, well, I just want to say too, though, I think we have to be hesitant on seeing that um, privately it's okay. 
because again, we got to remember, like you said, against uh, with, with, with the young man, with the owner of the uh, with the owner of the Clippers, um, the past on uh, the prior owner of the Clippers, who was forced to have to say, I think it was Donald Sterling. Um, Don, thank you, Donald Sterling. I think you know, um, even private conversations in itself, if it's if it's deemed to be technically racist, we had the exam- example with uh, the owner of uh, Papa John's, and then more recently yeah. with Rachel Nichols. So I think even private conversations, you know, one needs to be mindful of uh, maybe the audience and or who they're having a the conversation with, because a lot of times you you can see those conversations can get leaked. Um, if things may not go right, you know what I'm saying? Somebody might have something on it. So I think you have to be mindful, period, when you speak. That's why and I definitely I know, went to the image too, E, because like when you're a public figure, you definitely got to, you can't um, do exactly what you want to do. Go ahead, finish your point, my bad. Can you uh, Yeah, another point, e? Oh, no, 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 that was it. That was everything. Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> another point. I was just going to uh, finish up and say like, when you're a public figure, as opposed to a private one, when you're in public, it's definitely different rules. There's different right. there's different rules to the game. And as us being attorneys here, we definitely know that. Like, there's definitely different rules that you have to play by, even in the court of law. So you definitely want to pe- keep mindful. That's why you but, have advisors and public but, relations. But not even, just, not even just with the court, right? You know, as attorneys, we're people, right? And a lot of times people forget that. Like, they forget that we're human beings. We have a life. We have families, we have friends, we have situations and circumstances, and people always expect us to to behave or move a particular way. And Mm -hmm. because we're all individual, they don't recognize that, you know, we're regular people too, right? Like, and that goes to social norms. Right. When you think an attorney, you think of some conservative person who always wears a suit and always speaks a particular way and is just very rigid and stiff and extraordinarily smart and knows every little aspect of the law at the drop of a hat. And that's like just it's not realistic. Right. Lawyers, people know lawyers typically have a high alcoholism rate, the depression rate and anxiety rate is very high amongst attorneys as a part of like a an occupational hazard, I guess. Um, And it's not true for all lawyers. Let me just make sure I clarify that. But it is a common thing amongst lawyers in general, right? Mm. But lawyers, a lot of people go to law school right after they finish college. It's still very young. They like to go out. They like to party. They like to hang out. You know what I'm saying? Whether they have a drink Mm. or, you know, dance. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, people want to just go cut loose and be free but you can't let the world see that right because when you let the world see that you're a normal person people start judging you as an attorney because people have made it up in their own mind about the way you're supposed to move how you're supposed to behave and all these other things and it's like I understand that you know when you have an audience and you have a following, you have to be responsible for the people that are looking to, to you, right? But certain things should not be deemed unacceptable. Like if before, what a lot of people don't know is prior to um, becoming an attorney, you definitely have, you have to take the bar, everybody knows that, but what people don't know is we also have to go through something that's called character and fitness. Character and fitness is this really arduous process where you have to, fill out this application to even be a lawyer, right? And the application asks for stuff going back from to 1942 when Columbus sailed the ocean blue. They want, I want to know every job you ever had. It's like, what? Some states require, I want you to explain every time you've ever overdrafted your account. Are you serious? When I was in college, I was overdrafting. I was broke. That's why I overdrafted. I was broke. That's why. You know what I'm saying? You want me to tell you about a job I had back when I was like 15? I had it for three days. I don't even Not remember. Even jobs. I think they also ask about, you know, your credit. They'll ask about yeah. um, your, your your debt situation to see, you know, right. your, you know how are you managing, you know, money and things of that right. nature. So I think, you know, I'm sorry, I'm going to take off your point. Go ahead. Yeah. So, you know, they do all that. But in the meantime, you're also incredibly nervous because you're, you're afraid about your image. Right. So on social media, you may not say certain things. You don't want people taking pictures of you out there drinking. Right. You might it might might be New Year's and you might click a glass and you're cool. But if it's 
a Tuesday and you had a rough day and you want to go have a drink or something, they don't, you know, you got to be careful. You see what I'm saying? Because now they don't want, you don't want them judging you and having them look at you like you have a problem, even though you very well may or, not have a problem. And, and you know, and so to go to that point, you know what I'm saying? And we're and referencing it and bringing it back to what we're talking about and just understanding personal development and understanding how when you are in a certain position that, you know, you have to carry yourself a certain type of way, you know, for people like myself who, who, who aren't necessarily always social media savvy, um and and so we we're you know you might take pictures when you're in social settings and a lot of times when people are in social settings they drink socially um and and so that's a social norm rather you know to go out have a drink if someone's drinking they look at you awkwardly if you're not drinking or if you know you're um there and you're doing business and you know they don't see you have a drink they might look at you and think you know what's going on why he's not participating in something off with him you know um so i think it's almost natural that you do so but what you can find yourself in a situation sometimes of, and this is just being mindful of just this little thing in itself you know you could be almost um there doing your thing and only taking pictures when you're out with clients or only taking pictures when you're doing stuff and doing business relations but you'll look back at every picture you got you at a bar you're doing you know what i'm saying there's some drinks around so that image in itself even though you were just doing work you're promoting you working with others but the fact that this imagery of alcohol, liquor, and, you know, four or five of your photos, you know, it may give off a perception of, oh, well, this guy's a casual attorney. You know what I'm saying? They don't necessarily, but they don't necessarily know. You could be on the golf course and doing the same things. You know what I'm saying? You could be in the boardroom, you know, necessarily not necessarily drinking, but it depends on whose boardroom it is. You know what I'm saying? So um, I think that, you know, another thing that people have to do is, is being mindful of things that even though they might not necessarily be socially conscious of, that they need to, because even though it might be a social norm to do, it could also uh, impact um, others' perceptions of and, and hurt the development of someone maybe in their personal career, in their personal career, right. um, based off of some of their imagery. Right, and that's kind of the point that I was making. I'm, I'm sorry, Malik, I'm gonna let you jump in, but that's kind of the point that I was trying to make, right? Socially, we're, we have the society has placed these expectations on people that are not always realistic. They forget that people are people, and that we have lives of our own, and we should be able to live those lives, right? And um, I think that it's important to remember that um, because. It, in that space, like you're having a, you're, you're already in a struggle space, right? Like you just graduated law school, you're trying to become an attorney. So you, you're stressed, you, you're you probably studying for the bar. There's a lot of things, you're looking for a job, things like that. People don't want to hire you like that because you're overqualified and underqualified at the same time. It's just a mess. And so, I mean, drinking is just an example, right? It could be partying. It could be hanging out, just like just out there doing things. So people, society places these norms on you. The other part about it is, um, you know, we just have to be, we do absolutely have to be mindful because we don't want to portray a particular type of image, especially too, when you have people looking up to us and looking to us for advice and things like that. But the flip side to that is people have to stop being so judgmental because you don't know what is going on in other people's lives. Right. Unless you unless what they're doing is affecting you in a negative way, like you got to kind of let, let let people live. You know, I know it sounds kind of crazy to an extent because some people just, you know, they're not they don't recognize they do it or they don't they don't think that it's OK or they have their own ideas about it. But people should be allowed to, you know, live their lives without judgment because if you're walking down the street minding your business you want to be able to walk down the street mind your business you know you don't want people talking about how you walk or how you put one foot in front of the other or what kind of shoes you have on just let people you know move especially when it's based off of their perception of what they think other people should be and not realizing that you know people are people like you said earlier people are people whether you're mm -hmm. a doctor lawyer whatever profession you are mechanic whatever and I feel like, you know, like you said, people need to really get, you know, better, stronger views on, on the way that they view people as far as perception wise um, on professionals, because a lot of times the perception that, that a lot of people have, and I'm speaking just from our, our own standpoint, because like I said, I can only speak for myself, is like, you know, when, when you tell them oh, you're an attorney or, you know, you got this, you know, they look at you and they say, you know, well, what about your hair? Or, you know what I'm saying? And this, that, and the third and stuff like that. And it's like, 
you know, why do you think that I have to have a certain type of image in order for me to, to perform a job? Or And I think those are social norms that we have to kind of break in order for people to have um, different perceptions about themselves. You know what I'm saying? And I think the reason that I, and I talk about that from saying that in a personal growth standpoint is because sometimes you might have to ask yourself as an individual, how much are you willing to change of yourself? Because like you said, you may have to consider yourself to be a role model that you necessarily didn't think of. You may have to censor some of the things that you may have to say. So that personal growth, you have to ask yourself, you know, how much am I willing to give um, for my career or for, you know what I'm saying, for um, whatever it is, if it's your career, if it's your family, whatever it is that you may be doing. Um, and, and I think that's a question that everyone needs to be able to ask themselves and be comfortable with it so that they can look themselves in at, at the end of the day in the, in, the, uh, in the mirror and be able to say, you know, I'm okay with who I am and what I do to, to, to be, you know what I mean, to be who I am and, and to have the things that I have. Because I feel like, you know, that's one of the greatest feelings in the world is when you can feel like, you know, I, I, I can enjoy life. I don't have to rob, steal, kill. You know, I don't have to look over my back. I can enjoy life and, and, and know that I'm making a good living and not feel like, you know, my father, my ancestors or anyone else that you may be praying, I'm praying to or, or worship, you know, um, would be disappointed with, with your actions. And to me, that's honorable. To me, that's measurable. And that's, that's one of the highest levels of personal growth because it shows a person who cares about how they're moving in this world and not just what they're getting out of this world. Yeah, I was going to say, when it comes to social norms, you, you definitely want to take a look at them because everybody judges and there's always going to be the social norms of that community, that culture, that state, that country, wherever you live. So you definitely want to be mindful and be aware of those social norms and see which ones are uh, positive and which ones are negative. Like the positive ones you want to keep, you want to add them to your life and the negative ones that have a negative influence and negative impact on your life. You want to definitely go against them because not all social norms are bad, but all social norms aren't bad as well, aren't good, um, excuse me. So that, that's, that's a good segue into what we want to talk about, the positive and negative influence that can impact your personal growth and development. Like, for example, maybe some uh, national speakers, maybe some athletes, maybe some entertainers, musicians, business leaders, teachers, um, maybe your parents. So you definitely want to look at those people and model their behaviors, take the good things from them. And then you also want to look at the bad things and mistakes that they've made. So you can learn from that and avoid those mistakes in order to enhance your own personal growth and benefit uh, development, excuse me. Um, so those are some of the different things you wanna definitely look at um, from a positive aspect, but from a negative, uh, a negative influence, like you wanna stay away from those cause that, that can stunt your development and growth and lead you down the wrong path that you don't wanna go down. So you can even take a, the negative situations and look at that and say, that's an example of where I don't want to be at in my life. And I want to stay away from that. I don't want to make those same mistakes. So um, that's what I want to say about that. Y'all guys have any thoughts yeah. about positive and negative influence? Yeah. Um, one of the things that you said, like when you say look to people that have, have pretty much made it to a certain level of success that you wish to attain or surpass, right? Because you do some, you don't always need an example, right? Because you know, I'm the first lawyer in my family. Like I have family, this distant family, this family, you know, friends, family, you know, you know, family, friends, acquaintances, stuff like that. People that know lawyers and stuff like that. But in my family, on my mommy and my daddy's side, like as far as my grandmother's trees, like family trees, I am at, you know, and excuse me, there was, there was no blueprint for that for me. Right. And there were definitely times in my own experience where my family was like, maybe you need to move. Maybe you need to do it, go over here and try it someplace else. Maybe you shouldn't be doing this. Maybe you should be trying something else. You know what I'm saying? And I knew for me what was going to work for me. And I knew that all along. So although I struggled for a little while there, part of that struggle was because I was busy listening to other people. Right. And the people that had actually been it, it, on this journey, like mentors and things like that, told me what I needed to do when I wasn't always listening. And what they told me was I needed to do what worked for me. And 
the minute I um the minute I learned to do what worked for me, that's when I I reached a particular goal. And so those are the types of positive influences that you have. You also have to be careful and use discernment when you're take, getting advice from people, even those that have been in the lane that you're in, right? Because some things worked for other people that ain't gonna work for you, right? And you have to be able to see that. And some people, even though they have attained a certain level of success in that, that field that you're in, and it doesn't always have to be professional, right? It could be personal, it could be a relationship, it could be whatever. But the thing about it is, just cause something worked for somebody else, doesn't mean it's gonna work for you, number one. And number two, they don't always have your best interests at heart, right? And when we were talking about the Shikari Richardson situation, along with Felix and her bigging her up on, the, on a, I think it was Jimmy Fallon or whatever, Shikari felt like she was giving her fake love. That may have been true. The problem was you don't got to announce it, right? Just let her say whatever it is. You know what it is and keep it moving because it's you're showing a weakness. You're showing that you're distracted, you're showing that you are easily bothered, or even though you, no matter, sometimes people have to understand something too. No matter how hard, if you start going hard at trying to prove that you're unbothered by something, you're bothered. You're already, they have gotten under your skin. If I'm unbothered by something, I have absolutely no desire to even address it. I don't care. You see what I'm saying? So the minute you address something and you start talking, telling the world, oh my God, I don't care. Why is this? Why is that? You care. You see what I'm saying? Like, so, so, you know, I think it's important to recognize that, you know, just keep it moving. You don't, everything that gets a response doesn't need one. I mean, that you can respond to doesn't need to be responded to. You know, one of the judges, I had a hearing one time, right? And I, was, I did too much. I'm just going to be fully transparent. I did way too much. I won. Right. But I won not because I did a great job. I won because the other side did a bad job. Right. They did a terrible my job. The job I did wasn't bad, but I did too much. And when the judge said just because it can be said doesn't mean it needs to be. It really got me to think. And there's a lot of times things are going to work itself out, but you don't have to address everything that comes to you. You don't got to go to every fight that you've been invited to, things like that. You know, and I'm a lawyer. Our job is to, you know, advocate, argue, things like that. And that includes going back and forth. Being a lawyer is typically an adversarial type of job. It's not that for every area of law, like there's certain areas of law, like in, in, in real estate. Like if you're a real estate attorney, if you're not going to court to defend somebody, you're probably handling closings. You don't necessarily, that doesn't necessarily have to be adversarial. If you are helping people develop contracts and things like that, that doesn't have to be adversarial. You have to have that mindset about when people try to breach it and how to counteract that and all that other kind of stuff. But, you know, it doesn't require an argument all the time. And so sometimes people will talk themselves into a hole. So we got to let them do that. You know what I mean? And I think that it's important to recognize that when people and in, in, in you have to also stay steadfast, that's that's one thing I don't want to miss. When you have a plan, stick to it. Right. Don't let nothing make you waver off of that, because the thing about it is you don't you don't need negative influences to knock you off your square. You don't. It's a part of being confident in who you are because you are always going to have to continue to grow your self-confidence in whatever arena that you're in because you, if you're striving to be the best of what you're doing, you always have to remember inside that you are in fact the best, even though you may not be. You'll get there because that's a part of, you know, manifestation and motive and self-motivation. You know what I mean? So I wanted to make sure I, I, I said that. E, did you have something that you wanted to add to that before we moved on? Pardon me, guys. No, you guys are hitting that one really well. Um, okay. You know, so yeah, like like I was saying, like a way, one of the main, one of the biggest ways to making sure you improve your growth, right, is to stay in firm in where you are, being confident and not allowing other people to make you waver. Just get the information, process it, figure out what's going to work for you, what's not, 
You know what I mean? Everybody's not going to be happy with it, but your job is not to please everybody because nobody, you, you can't please 100% of the people 100% of the time. And at the end of the day, you're the only one that has to live with the decisions that you make. People will sit there all day, every day, talking about how this might affect them, that might affect them. But in every single success, in every single failure that you, that you have, the only con constant is you. So remember that. And so when, 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 you, when you don't, when you don't succeed at something, remember that there's something inside of you that you need to improve. And that's a part of development. That's a part of growth, right? And, and it's okay because there's no, such real, there's no such thing as a true loss. There's always lessons, right? You learn something in every lesson that you, I mean, in every loss that you have, right? There's, there's always a lesson. Sometimes they're harder, they're harder to see, but they're definitely there. So it's important to make sure you pay attention, stay focused and stay grounded and don't let anybody knock you off your square. I can't employ you I agree with that. enough. I can't, I, agree I can't because every time, I'm just gonna be transparent. I wanted to be a lawyer since I was 18 years old, right? There have been so many times where I could have quit, where I wanted to quit, but I did not stop. I didn't allow anything to stop me from doing what I wanted to do. I had family members telling me maybe you shouldn't be doing this. I had family members telling me maybe I should postpone it. Maybe I should move. Maybe I should do this, that, and the other thing. I had friends that were saying the same thing. I even, had, and I'm pretty sure, you know, there were certain people that I know they didn't say it to my face. They were behind my back saying the same thing because things didn't look like they were working out. Oh, you're still at that? So I stopped talking about it, but kept pushing. And so when I got accepted to law school, I was like, I didn't even know you still wanted to do that. No, nope, I didn't take my eyes off the prize. That's something my grandmother always told us, never take your eyes off the prize. So then when I got to law school, I had ups, I had downs. But guess what? When I graduated, my class selected me to be the class valedictorian. It was a wonderful experience. It's something that I will always cherish, right? Then I, got, I graduate, I'm on cloud nine. Forget about all them student loans. Then I take the bar. I didn't pass the first time. I didn't pass the second time. I took the bar exam eight times. I'm just gonna be honest with you. But guess what? I continued to persevere. And there's many, many people that would have quit after two times, one time, two times. You see what I'm saying? I know people that took the bar once, failed, and never took it again, and went and found something else to do. But I said to myself, this is something that I'm going to do. God did not bring me this far to leave me here. This is something I said I wanted. Now, when I get it, if I don't want it no more, all right, cool. But at least I got it. At least I did what I had to do to get it. And I'll never be able to look back on my life and say, I didn't try, right? And it's never Absolutely. too late. And it's never, ever, ever, ever too late. People always think, oh, I'm too old. No, you're not. No, you're not. Because when we went to law school, there were people that went to law school with us that were there as a second career, Right. There were people that had grandchildren and some more stuff. So, you know, always remember to keep the faith within yourself. And that, those, are, those are some of the biggest ways to um, improve your growth and development because you need that foundation, the foundation of not forgetting who you are, why you started and not taking your eyes off the prize. Absolutely. And I wanted to call it back up on what Sam was talking about in regards to, um, you know, having that, that faith in self, because that's going to be one of the biggest things. I know a lot of times with people, I also will say this too, because I've seen situations with individuals where their, their development might come out from circumstances that force them to, uh, to, to develop, maybe because outside of themselves. And what I mean by that is some people step up the answer when maybe they um, become a father or a mother, you know what I'm saying? They may change some of their ways. And now all of a sudden they, um, they have to be a little bit more um, intentional with their actions. Um, then you have other individuals who, who may, like I said, not, might not necessarily be through necessity of a childhood. It could also be a relationship. They may meet a individual that they have in their life and it kind of helps them to grow because one thing I've also known, and Malik talked about this as well, is that, you know, one, learn yourself. So if you know that, you know, you are motivated by external things, such as whether it's, you know, material things, whether it's experiences, whether it's fights, whether it's whatever it is, then understand what it is that motivates you, because that can help you to, to, to get the dedication and the stamina to continue to do what you need to do and the fortitude to get through. 
if you can kind of think of why you're doing what you're doing. The second thing that I would say is too with that is, is get with some individuals that you said that are doing it. One thing I know about success in, in, in life and in, in, uh, in, in, in like, again, to a point that Malik was referring to earlier about motivational speakers as well as mentors, is that the people that I know that are really successful and they have that, that real success, they're not worried about somebody else, whether it be in their lane or whatever. Like, I'm not saying that they out here giving away trade secrets, but what I do mean is they are confident and comfortable with their position, with what they bring to the table, with their work ethic and what their product is, that they are not concerned with helping someone learn or giving someone details as to how they do, um, how they may be making it in, in, in this world. And, and I've seen that in a society in, the simple, in, in a couple of ways. One in particular is uh, recently I've worked with a friend of mine and they had um, a sibling who was in, in the industry and I was, I was looking to try to get into it. They contact, I contacted a couple of friends, you know, people give me some advice. I contacted some people that I may have known, you know, they, you know, kind of maybe give me a word or two, but you know, I guess like sometimes if people don't necessarily see how they can, how they can kind of use you in a sense, they won't, won't necessarily be willing to give you information. And I feel like when you're trying to, you know, make your way in this world and you maybe want to try to, you know, fend for yourself and not necessarily feel as though you're being a victim um, to someone else's to someone else's story or to someone else's um, vision for your life. You, you have to be willing to say, you know what, if one door closed, I'm going to go to the next one. And so with me doing that, I was able to get with the colleague and, and his peer and, and get some things rolling as opposed to just giving up and feeling as though, oh man, well, I don't know nobody in my family that did it. You know, uh, it's not possible. I don't see nobody, no one else do it. I can't get no help. You know, well, they won't do this, they won't do that. It's like, no, just keep working, keep working, keep working, keep putting yourself in that energy. You know, sometimes even if you don't know what you need to be doing, another way that you can kind of get that personal growth is to just put yourself around that environment, you know, um, because maybe you don't necessarily have that mentor. I, I, I'm one who live in an area where I don't really necessarily have a lot of friends or family where I'm at. Um, I, I don't have like, you know, generational um, uh, family members that, you know, know family and things of that nature in that area to help me where I'm at. So a lot of times I have to get what I get from asking, from working, from networking, from talking. So uh, you have to kind of put yourself in those positions where you're in spaces where individuals who are doing the things that you like to do, you can kind of be around them and be willing to offer something to them. You know, um, whether it be um, whether it be, you know, your services, your time, whatever it is that you can find a way to be of value to individuals. I think that would tremendously help your personal growth, because what you will find is you will be able to get insight to things that you might not have known before. Um, in particular, with me, I can say um, for me, I can say in my life, um, I can say in my life, you know, I wouldn't know what hard work was if I necessarily didn't see examples of that growing up or if I didn't see other, you know, my mom or my dad go bust their tail. So then growing up, I wouldn't have known how to, you know, work on that, how to build on that and how to do it. So if I didn't know what that was like, it would be a, lot, a little more of a challenge for me to kind of sit up there and say, okay, well, you know, what do you mean I'm supposed to do more than 40 hours a week? You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, you got to do more than just the minimum. If you didn't grow up doing that, you think, oh, well, they only pay me to do this. So I'm only going to do what, you know what I mean? And so that type of stuff becomes a different type of mentality when you try to tell someone, no, you know, you got to do more than what's asking you for time. When you want to get more than what you should, a lot of times you're going to have to do more than what's asking you first. And that's something that's a, a level of personal development because some people can't get their mind around that, that I got to do more. You know, so I think a lot of times we have to challenge ourselves to do more. And another thing that I would say, too, is challenge yourself to put yourself in situations so that you can see exactly, exactly where, you know, your limits lie. I think we don't necessarily get to know where our limits lie until we push ourselves and we challenge ourselves in new ways. Like Sam said, she had to keep challenging herself. We all had to keep challenging ourselves to take the bar. We all had to keep challenging ourselves to keep passing those classes, to keep getting up. You know, um, you got to push past, like you said, the support system that you may not have sometimes, you know. Um, but like I said, if you if you realize within yourself that you don't necessarily have, uh, if you realize within yourself that you don't necessarily have the, I call it internal locus of control, meaning that you don't, you can't look within yourself to motivate yourself, find other things to motivate you. Because one thing you can't do 
is allow yourself to stay stagnant and to not grow. Because whatever's not growing is dying, is what I was told. So you have to grow. You have to challenge yourself. You have to be committed to being uncomfortable sometimes. And, and, and that's the only way that you're going to really be able to, to see yourself really get in a full bloom. Um, so, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. My, my colleagues pretty much said a lot of the things I was going to cover, but I was going to cover a few points here. Discipline, I feel like if you want to increase your personal development and growth as an individual in every aspect, whether it's mentally, physically, financially, or whatever, you, you have to be disciplined, number one. Uh, number two, you want to set out the goals for yourself, you know, reasonable, attainable goals and, you know, set a time frame in which you want to achieve those goals. And the third thing, you want to take daily action towards your goals every day. Um, I think uh, a few minutes every day, maybe an hour, whatever the time you have towards reaching your goals. I think that's something you can do to help you. And the last thing, my last point is you don't want to be so hard on yourself. There's a lot of times where I know uh, I can be personally hard, hard on myself. And I know other people struggle with that too, like where you feel like you're not where you want to be at in life. And um, you want to be able to be at a greater place, whether it's physically, mentally, financially, whatever the area is in your life you want to improve. But don't beat yourself up about it. You know, I know we're our own worst critic, our harshest critic. So um, sometimes we can be a little bit easier on ourselves. But then again, you don't want to be lazy and get complacent either. So it's good to have that drive as well. But it's it's always it's always about finding that balance. So you gotta find that balance, and um, and that's it. Um, Sam, you got us with the motivational minute. Yeah, I have a number of quotes, so I'm gonna go fairly quickly. But I want to start off by saying, you know, there's that quote that I don't know who said it, but um, it says, "If your dreams don't scare you, you're dreaming too small." Something to that effect. Dream big. Your your dreams should scare you. And um, there's a quote right here uh, by Carrie Fisher, and it says, stay afraid, but do it anyway. What's important is the action. You don't have to wait to be confident. Just do it, and eventually the confidence will follow. And that's the absolute truth, because a lot of times we people are afraid to do things because they don't think they have the ability. Do it anyway, and you'll find the confidence. And when that confidence settles itself within you, it's something that can't really be shaken or broken not when you all when not not as long as you remember who you are you know and yes it's important to know what your limits are but I choose to be limitless that's my personal thing you know what I'm saying and so yes I do know where my strengths and my weaknesses are but I, as far as I'm concerned I don't believe anybody can stop me I kind of feel like I'm as, although I don't agree with a lot of the things that Kanye um says that's definitely, that, that attitude is absolutely th the type of time I'm on. And the reason why is because I, I feel like there's, God has a lot more for me. And so there's nothing wrong with having that type of attitude. Um, another thing, another quote here says, um, one can choose to go back towards safety or forward towards growth. Growth must be chosen again. Uh, growth must be chosen again and again. Fear must be overcome again and again. And Abraham Maslow said that, you know what I mean? Like a lot of times we get out there on the limb and we want to quit and go back to where it's comfortable, but success doesn't live in comfort. You know what I'm saying? You, you, let me not even say comfort. I'm going to say complacency, right? Cause mm -hmm. you can't, you can't be successful and complacent. You can be comfortable, but you can't be, com you can't be complacent because you shouldn't just be settling. It's, you know, not, not if you have, if you if you have dreams to go further as long as you have dreams to go further that's what growth is about when you think of a plant it doesn't grow and stay still at the same time it doesn't make sense you know what i'm saying it's gonna move so just remember that in order to grow you grow forward now a palm tree grows down before it grows up but either way it still grows so just it, it also also i just want to add in that too and when she's saying growing forward it doesn't mean that everything is going to be like in a linear forward direction you know, right. because I think a lot of times people get frustrated when they see that things might not be working the way that they think it should. And I think we all talked about that, too. Like you, you, you mentioned it briefly earlier about how things might not work out how it's supposed to do, but you got to stick to the plan. It's almost like you said, it's almost like a delusional grandeur where you have mm -hmm. to almost think of yourself 
to a point where you're like, I know it's gonna work, I know it's gonna work until it, it actually happens. Yes, and it's manifestation. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, you 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 have to have that type of uh, like you know that manifestation, that belief, that 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 desire where like people might think like you crazy, but like you know in your heart of hearts, like man, it's, it's just gonna a matter happen. of time. Exactly. Yeah, it's just right. it's just a matter of time. And because I people, my because race. people, people are typically impatient. That's one thing I think we all forgot to mention is being patient, not just just having that focus and determination. You have to be patient. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, the last the last quote that I have was is, is by Bernice Johnson Reagan. Um, she says, life challenges are not supposed to paralyze you. They're supposed to help you to discover who you are. So just remember that as you grow, go through and grow through life, you're going to become more settled in who you are. A lot of times we talk about we need to find ourselves and all that, but you find yourself by going and growing through things. You know what I'm saying? So um, I think that it's just important to remember to continue to grow. Don't ever stop growing, you know, because if you stop growing, you stop living. Um, and 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 just make sure you stay focused. Oh, there was one, one more that I wanted to say, and I said it already, but it was said by George Eliot. It's never too late to be who you might have been. That means... Sometimes people will tell you you can't do something because you're too old, it's too late, it's too whatever. You do what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? If you believe in God, you are, you should understand that God does not live in a box. And if you're created in his image, then neither do you. So just go ahead and do what it is that you got to do. So with that being said, you know, we appreciate the time that you guys took to spend with us. We hope that we were here, that we were able to influence you in a positive way and just show you different ways um, to continue to grow and develop yourself to reach different levels of success. Um, I'm one of your co-hosts, co-hosts, Samantha Adams. If you'd like to follow me, you can follow me on Facebook at Samantha Adams hyphen ESQ. If you want to follow me on um, Instagram, you can follow me at Samantha Renee 77 underscore ESQ. Make sure you check us out on, on, on all social media platforms at Counterpoise Podcast. And this episode right here that you're watching is going to be uploaded to YouTube today. So you can check us out. You can also check out any of the other um, episodes that you may have already missed. We love y'all and thank y'all. I'm going to pass the ball over to my other co hosts so they can drop their socials. But make sure you check us out every Sunday at 1130-ish. And then every uh, Wednesday at 8.30-ish on IG. Guys? Okay, yeah, I'll go real quick. Um, Thank you guys for jumping in. I'll do it again, like I said, just on the move, so I apologize for the in and out. But um, you can catch me on uh, Instagram at thatguy2104. Uh, You also, like she said, you know, live on Wednesdays. You can catch us here on Facebook as well and on YouTube. Um, Look forward to talking to you guys soon. All right. Um, yeah, my name is Malik Foster. I'm another co-host for the Cowboys podcast. Uh, like they said, um, you know, uh, we go, we shoot these live sessions every Sunday around 1130-ish. And um, we go live on Instagram at Counterpoints Podcast every Wednesday around 830. Um, so that's our What's Up Wednesday. So two times a week, we're live. These will be uploaded on to YouTube, this video, and on um, Instagram or IGTV as well. You can follow me at Malik M. Foster. Um, that's for all my social media. You can follow me there. Um, you can find me there. Um, and that's it. I'll take us home. And hey, thanks for watching. Like, yes, comment, yes. share, subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Send it out one time. Bless us, be some blessings. Shout out to our angels.